time for another book. This morning's video is brought to you by energy drinks. Um, no, seriously, it's, yeah. It's already one of those mornings for me. Okay, so this morning's book is American Fire by Monica Hett. I'm not sure if it's Hess or Hesse. Um, H-E-S-S-E. So apparently I'm on a string of authors whose names I can't pronounce. Um, this was one of this month's books of the month. Uh, it was just published last week, like literally a week ago. And it is the story of this couple who went on an arson spree in Accomack County in Virginia. And I'm from Philly. I had never heard of Accomack County, Virginia. And the author and pretty much everyone involved in the case assumes you don't know where Accomack County is or um, what it is, where it is. Um, but it's essentially kind of like a little offshoot of Virginia. So, but it's an area that has really kind of in a way fallen from grace the way a lot of rural America has. And the author through her book tries to tie this string of arsons to the county's economic downturn. And, you know, eventually they end up burning like 60 some buildings. And the question is, could this have happened anywhere else in America? You know, where, you know, in this particular place, there are so many abandoned buildings because so many people left the area. No one could afford, you know, not really they couldn't afford to live there anymore, but they had to leave for better job opportunities and they left for educational opportunities and never came back, you know, the so-called brain drain. Um, you know, could it be tied back to that? And that's essentially the basis of this entire book. So the average Goodreads rating is 3.84. I gave it three stars, so we'll kind of get into it. Um, this, it was a very interesting book. I, I, I'll be honest, the fires occurred between November 2012 and April of 2013, but I never, I don't remember hearing about the fires. Um, in 2012, 2013, I was living in Georgia. Um, but I don't remember hearing about these fires. Then again, I was also working like 80 hour weeks, so I didn't know about much. Um, but the author really goes through the case from two sides because the uh, the people who did it, it was a couple, uh, Charlie Smith and Tanya Bundick. And, you know, the, he had a history of felons. He had a history of drug problems. And she, she kind of had her own issues. She's, she, you read about her and she's kind of like this, you know, um, I guess kind of like she's all that, only, you know, she starts out as this really awkward, not necessarily awkward, she had a bad childhood. I'm trying to think of the best way to describe this woman. Because, and she even says in the book, like, how do you describe Tanya? And, you know, people say different things and people remember her differently. You know, some people remember her as, you know, being totally capable of setting fires. Um, but she had a really bad childhood. Um, she had a very abusive dad who would um, beat her and her sister at the drop of a hat. And it became one of those situations where Tanya would take the heat for her sister a lot of times. Um, you know, taking the beatings and trying to deflect heat off, off her sister. But then the sisters kind of, you know, drifted apart as they got older. And, you know... Charlie, the night that he met Tanya, was considering killing himself. He was, you know, going to drink himself to death or overdose. And he met her and she, you know, talked to him and he ended up flushing the cocaine. And, um, you know, they, they ended up getting together and, you know, whatever. But then they start setting these fires. And, you know, th the good thing is no one was ever hurt. Um, at one point they even, there was like a chicken coop attached to the one house. They released all the chickens. Um, so, you know, there was a note of compassion in 
what they were this is going to sound weird. There was a note in compassion in what they were doing in that they didn't want to hurt anyone. Um, but at the same time, it was like, okay, but why are you setting these fires? And it goes through and it's, let me get into my notes. It'll, it'll be a little, it'll be a little easier that way. Okay. So my bottom line up front, my, in the military, they call it bluff. Uh, bottom line up front, page 230. This paragraph I felt really encapsulated Charlie and Tanya and this whole crime spree. Love is a weird act, an optimistic delusion, a leap of faith and foolishness. Sometimes when it is tested, imperfections that were there from the beginning lurking deep can begin to work their way to the surface. Even two people who love each other deeply will always be two people, two souls. You can't ever get completely in someone's head or in someone else's heart. It is the greatest tragedy and the greatest beauty of a relationship that at some level, the person you are closest to will always be a total friggin' mystery. Maybe the real mystery is why we ever do it at all. It must be something incredible. And that's essentially what the entire book boils down to is love is weird. You know, and it makes you do weird things. And... We'll get into it. So, how do I want to attack this? Um, I'll just go this way. Okay, so, the, first off, the writing style. I, I did enjoy reading this book. Um, I really enjoy stories, so getting to read about this, um, you know, it was, it was pretty cool and getting to, you know, cause I've never worked in a fire department. Um, you know, my father-in-law did, but you know, I, I never did. So getting to read about, you know, volunteer fire departments and stuff like that was kind of cool. And you know, how they fight fires and you know, all that, you know, was pretty cool. Um, you know, and it's a, it's a true crime novel. Um, I didn't, and I know why she did this, but I personally didn't enjoy it. Like, you know from almost, you know, probably page seven, you know from page whatever that Charlie Smith did it. But for me, that was kind of like a drawback because I like mystery more. Like, oh my God, who did it? And from the beginning, you know exactly who did it in this book. So that was kind of a drawback for me, but I know exactly why she did it. So I can't fault her for that. Um, I just kind of wish there was more of a mystery. Um, I didn't feel like the writing style, like her take on it was very consistent. Um, you know, at times she was philosophical, at times she was more academic. Um, and then you got like, you know, in my bluff paragraph, you know, um, the, the person you love will always be a total friggin' mystery. Like, you know, very, very colloquial. So I I didn't feel on even ground with the writing style. Like I I felt like I didn't. It was kind of jarring, um, you know, because you go from her telling this story about Tanya and Charlie, and then she's getting academic about, um, you know, chapter seventeen about Bonnie and Clyde compared to other um, criminal couples, back to telling the story. And then you get this overly colloquial, you know, sentiment. So, I don't know. For me, personally, that was kind of jarring. Um, but I, I really liked her character development. And my specific example for this, let me see, 7 and 23, um, is for the Fire Chief Beal. Let me see, page 7. So, Beal's first appearance is on page 7. Uh... Jeff Beal. Beal was a tall man with a bristling mustache and a wit as dry as sandpaper. He drive 30 miles to loan a friend $20, but whether a person liked him depended on whether they understood that some people showed their love through exacting expectations and constant sarcasm. Which, by the way, is me. <laughs> At least with the constant sarcasm. And then on page 23... Uh, firefighting was his second career. He'd served a full five years in the Air Force and 15 years in the Coast Guard before moving to the Eastern Shore. Um, da -da -da. 
so I had this image. You know how you have an image of a character in your head and then you look at the picture and you're like, that's not what I saw. Um, or they make it into a movie and you're just like, I didn't see that character. You know, I didn't see that actor as that person. Well, I don't, I don't know if you can see this. Unfortunately, I can't be behind the camera and in front of it. Um, so that's Jeff Beal. And when I saw it, that is exactly what I was imagining in my head. So, you know, I felt like her descriptions of the characters and really how she presented them, it was a good match between, and these are real people, so it was a good match between what I was seeing in my head and what they actually look like. You know, for what that matters, some people don't care, but, you know, for me, I thought that was kind of cool. I was like, oh, look at that, you know. Um... So the academic side of things, I liked this chapter, but at the same time, it felt weird in the middle of the rest of the book. Um, let me see. It's chapter 17. Uh, I should have marked it. 138. And the chapter is called Someday They'll Go Down Together. And it's based on a poem written by Bonnie of Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, someday they'll go down together and they'll bury them side by side. To a few it'll be grief, to a law of relief, but it's death for Bonnie and Clyde. And this chapter specifically looks at Bonnie and Clyde compared to other couple criminals, such as uh, Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka, the Ken and Barbie killers and Nathan Leopold and Richard Loeb. Um, I thought there was another one in here. Um, but essentially, it, and it talks about folia de, or madness of two, a psychiatric disorder where two patients share the same delusion, cultivating it together and transmitting it back and forth between each other. You know, as a possible explanation for why couples decide to do things. And it was good, I understand why it was there, but at the same time, it comes down to that um, consistent writing style. Like, it was jarring, you know, and I understand why the chapter was there. It was a very interesting chapter, um, and I don't know if books have been, I'm sure books have been written about it by now. Um, you know, it's something that at some point I'd be interested in looking into, um, but it just felt weird where it was and how it was in the book. Like, I got to the end of the chapter and I was like, oh, that's it. You know, I was expecting it to go back to Charlie and Tanya, which it did, but in a separate chapter, which, again, comes back to... it. I don't know, the writing style just felt weird to me. Like, it, I couldn't... But you know how, like, you go to visit someone and you don't... You're constantly sitting on the edge of the couch because you don't feel like you can lean back and relax. Um, that's how it kind of felt with this book. Like, I couldn't lean back and relax into this book. Like, I felt like I was constantly just, you know, like, I was waiting for the next... I, uh, I don't know, like, not waiting for the next... It's not even waiting for the next development or waiting for, oh my god, what's going to happen next? It, it wasn't like that. It was just, I couldn't relax into this book. And it wasn't anticipation. It wasn't, oh my god, this is scary. It's not like that. It's just, I couldn't relax with it. And I like a book that I can relax with. And it, uh, so I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like I said, the story is interesting. I think she did a, she did an impeccable job researching this. And she did a really, really great job with the details and, you know, talking to people and getting people's accounts and um, trying to get it right. But I couldn't relax into this book. So that's for what it's worth. Um, and the mental, I, I refer to it as the mental acrobatics of, did she get her point across? You know, she was trying to tie the arsons to the decline of this county and I think it comes back to you know and I'm not a law professor I'm not a criminal justice expert I'm none of those things but from my understanding it's kind of like um you know 
it's a broken window f uh, phenomenon that, you know, when you have, like, broken windows in a neighborhood, crime tends to be higher. Um, you know, so, like, when there's more abandoned buildings, would crime tend to be higher? Is it the same kind of principle? And, like, I would think so, but I don't know. But, like, finishing the book, like, closing the book and thinking about it, I felt like I... I don't feel like she drove, and again, this isn't just my opinion, um, I didn't feel like it was established in a strong enough manner for me, and, you know, she may watch this someday and be like, what the hell are you talking about? And it's like, and I'm really sorry. Um... But it's like when I closed the book, I didn't leave with a sense of, oh, she showed this to this. You know, I was left more with a story of, oh, okay, well, you know, he copped to the crime, she didn't, but she ended up doing the Alfred plea, and, you know, she's probably guilty. That's what I left with. I left with the crime part of it. I didn't leave with, oh, yeah, you know, there were all these abandoned buildings because everyone left, and da da da. And this is, you know, I didn't leave with that. So. If this were like a doctoral thesis, like I don't know that she proved her argument really. So I don't know. I mean, okay. So at the end of the day, I gave it three stars um, because I did enjoy it. I would recommend it. You know, I wouldn't be like, don't pick this book up. Um, you know, and I did see a lot of people really enjoyed it. Um, but for me, the, the writing style, not being able to relax into it, I mean, because there are books that you can relax into that are true crime. Um, you know, and then there are other ones that something just doesn't match, you know, like, it's like two hearts beating at a sink, you know, and you, you feel it and it's uncomfortable. So, there's that. Um... Yeah. So in the meantime, that's my review. Go ahead and pick it up. It just came out last week, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Hit like, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Um, if you've read this, if you think I'm totally off the mark, you know, go ahead and let me know. Like I said, this is just my opinion. You're entitled to yours. Um, what do you want me to read next? I have a stack of books. Um, I'm slowly working my way through. And like I said in my last video, you know, I'm doing some research on the side. So, you know, I'm trying to balance those two things out. Um, you know, but shoot me your book recommendations. Tell me what you think I should be reading and tell me what you want to see a, a video on. And until next time, readers, you have a good one, okay? <laughs>